Hey guys, what is up? Matt is Matt's watch and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be doing my 2023 AFL ladder predictions. But anyways guys, let's get straight into it. So starting off with the with 18th, I reckon Hawthorne will come last with 3 wins and 20 losses. Um, with a percentage of 47.29 and going down 5 positions from last year. Um, the reason I think they'll come last is because they have lost a few good players in the draft over and uh, including Tom Mitchell which is probably one of their best players and that will definitely affect them a fair bit and that's why I see them coming last. Moving on to 17th, we, I think the Greater Western Sydney Giants um, will come in 17th winning a few games here and there but winning 6 games and losing 17 with a percentage of 85.47 but still going down 1 from last year. Um, I feel like they are having a, probably going to be a similar season to last year. They didn't win many games over the season, and they came 16th. But I feel like other teams will have got better, but they would have stayed around the same area. So that's why I see them coming 17th. In 16th, I have North Melbourne with 8 wins and 15 losses, um, with a percentage of 82.73 and going up two positions from last year. With a new coach, Alistair Clarkson, who coached four Hawthorne to four premierships and some good new recruits. I feel like they can win more games in the past three years and should easily be better than what they were a few years ago. Um, so, yeah, that's why I see them coming 16th. But in 15th, we have the West Coast Eagles winning, also winning eight games and losing 15, with a, but with a percentage of 82.94 and going up two games from two positions from last year. Um, with no COVID people being out like last year at the start of the year it, they struggled last year because of that but this year there won't be any players out and I feel like their team will be stronger and be able to win more games across the entire season so that's why I see them coming 15th in 14th I have Essendon winning nine games and losing 14 with a percentage of 90.02 and going up one position from last year now, I feel like Essendon will have about the same season as last year, but just winning a few more games here and there. Um, a new coach might affect it a little bit, but not as much as as to bring them down a lot of uh, heaps of positions. So that's why I see them coming 14th. Now, in 13th, I have a, maybe a little bit of surprise and an upset. The Richmond Tigers winning nine games, losing 13 and drawing one game with a percentage of 93.7 and going down six positions. Now, last year, yes, they did make the finals, but I don't see them being as good as a lot of their other years. They are, they still have a strong team, but I just don't think um, they can do it for, like, another season, like, be really good. Um, they, they are still very good, but I just see them having a little bit of a drop season, but then maybe the next season going back up a fair few positions, maybe back into the finals next season. So it, it's a little bit of an upset, but still, I see them coming 13th. In 12th, I have the Western Bulldogs winning 10 games and losing 13, with a percentage of 100.74 and going down four positions from last year. Um, when, when making the grand final two years ago, um, since they have been dropping and dropping in form, and I feel like that will happen again, but this time I see them not, see them not making the finals and instead coming 12th. Um, maybe they'll stay around the same position for next year, but for this year, I feel like they'll come 12th and maybe even continue to drop, though. But in 11th, I have the Adelaide Crows also winning 10 games and losing 13, but with a percentage of 109.12 and going up three positions from last year. Um, unlike the Bulldogs, I see them keep on rising from the wooden spoon in 2020. Um, if they... I feel like they have they have kept rising the past couple of years, and I feel like this year they'll really jump and win a lot more game, and win a few more games throughout the season. So yeah, in tenth I have Port Adelaide winning eleven games and losing twelve with a percentage of ninety seven point eight three and going up one position from last year. Um, that I again I see them having a similar season to last season. But instead, they didn't lose the first six games and they will not really ever lose more than two um, or win more than two in the entire season. I see them just having a like win-loss season um, going back and forward. But 
other than that, I see them coming 10th. And so, yeah. But in ninth, I have St Kilda Saints just missing out on the finals again, um, winning 11 games and losing 12, with a percentage of exactly 104 and going up one position from last year. Again, just missing out on the finals. Um, not by percentage, though, but just because they didn't win enough games throughout the season. Um, really unlucky, but still, I don't see them making it. Um, they do have the skill and talent, but um, just not. Just other teams are better, and that's why I don't see them making the finals this year. Now, moving on to the top eight. In eighth, I have the Collingwood Magpies winning 12 and losing 11 with a percentage of 117.41 and going down four positions from last year. Honestly, to me last year, it felt like they shouldn't have won as many games as they did, considering all the close games that they had. But um, they did anyways. But this year, I see them dropping down and not winning as many games and winning about half and half. Um, they do have a lot of really good players, including picking up Tom Mitchell from the Hawthorne Hawks during the trade season. And some good recruits in the draft. But still, I don't see it's enough to make the top four again this year. And instead, just making the finals. So that's why I see them coming eighth. In seventh, I have the Gold Coast Suns winning 13 games and losing 10. With a percentage of 120.43 and going up five positions from last year. Honestly, by now I reckon the Gold Coast Suns should have made the finals. But they haven't yet. And if, they, if this happens, it will be their first final series. They have a very skilled team and honestly, I reckon maybe last year they had a really good chance to make it, but they just couldn't with a few close games. But um, this year, I think they'll make the finals um, coming seventh and, and still making an elimination final, but still making their first ever final series. But in number six, I have Carlton Blues also winning 13 games and losing 10, but with a percentage of 125.03 and going up three positions from last year. Um, last year, they started off the year eight wins and two losses, but in the back half of the year, they really struggled and just couldn't make it because of a one-point loss to Collingwood. But this year, I feel like it will be different and they'll actually make the finals, getting a home um, elimination final against Gold Coast and... Yeah, they have a really good team with Brownlow medalist in their side, Patrick Cripps from last year. I feel like they have a really, really good chance um, in to make the finals. So, yeah. Now, moving on to fifth, I have the Sydney Swans, who have 15 wins, 7 losses and 1 draw. That um, The draw they had was against Richmond. Um, and finishing in fifth... Because most teams after a grand final, massive grand final loss will drop off a bit the next year. Sydney have dropped off to the elimination final, I think. But still winning 15 games and only going down two positions. But they have a good team, but just not skilled enough, I reckon, to make the qualifying finals. Now in fourth, we have the reigning premiers, Geelong Cats winning 16 games, losing 7, with a percentage of 139.11 and going down 3 positions, just making the qualifying finals from last year's Premiers. Um, some of their players are getting really a bit old, but their new players are also really skilled, and they will, in the next few years, they will also take their team to maybe even another Premiership. But for this year, I think they'll drop down just a little bit, but then maybe in the next few years, they'll rise back up again. But in third, I have the Melbourne Demons with six, 17 wins, 6 losses, um, with a percentage of 137.86 and going down one position from last year. Um, Melbourne not making getting a home qualifying final, but still making the qualifying finals for a third year straight year in a row um, is really good. And they are probably going to stay in around this position. But with Max Gorn being out for a, a first few games, might affect them for the first start but then they'll come back in the end of the season I reckon. Now moving on to the top two in second I reckon the Fremantle Dockers um, will be second with 17 wins and six losses with a percentage of 141.20 and going up three positions from last year. Um, I feel like Fremantle have had the skill to be able to get to this position for the past few years but just haven't been able to do it but I feel like this year they'll be able to get the home qualifying final and have a big chance to make the grand final with all their skill and talent. In Especially in the midfield, um, they have a lot of good, good players there. 
But now, in first, I think the Brisbane Lions will take the minor premiership this year, winning 19 games and losing just the four, with, a very, with a, I think, a very high percentage of 178.92 and going up five positions from last year. Um, Brisbane have an amazing forward, midfield and defensive line, and they are very strong in all areas of the game, and that's why I see them coming first overall in the entire season ladder. But now, moving on to the finals... Um, in the first qualifying final uh, between Brisbane and Geelong, I think Brisbane will win um, 11 goals, 12, 78 to Geelong, 10 goals, 7, 67. And the, Brisbane will move on to the preliminary final while Geelong, within, having the second chance, will move on to the semi-final. Now, the el- first elimination final between Sydney and Collingwood, um, I reckon Sydney will win by just two points, um, 15 goals, 6, 96 to Collingwood, 14 goals, 10, 4, 94 in a very close match all the way to the end. And now the second elimination final between Carlton and Gold Coast. I feel like Carlton will take a fairly easy victory by 21 points. Um, 11 goals, 17, 83 to 9 goals, 8, 62. Um, in probably Carlton would have mainly, I say, would rule all game and be able to dominate. But then in the second qualifying final, I think it will be between Fremantle and Melbourne. And a bit of an upset, Melbourne will win by 5 points. 11 goals, 9, 75 to Fremantle, 10 goals, 10, 70. But now the first semi-final between Geelong and Sydney. I think Geelong will thrash Sydney like they did in the grand final. 21 goals, 11, 137 to 5 goals, 13, 43. And in the other qualifying final is a 12-point gap instead with Fremantle getting 13 goals, 10, 88 to Carlton, 12 goals, 4, 76, ending Carlton's run in this, year's, in this year. But now moving on to the preliminary finals, I think that Brisbane and Fremantle will have a one-point difference separating them. Brisbane getting 10 goals, 11, 71. The Fremantle, 10 goals, 10, 70. Losing by just the one point. And Brisbane go through to the grand final. While Geelong take out a one goal win. Um, 11 goals, 19, 85. To Melbourne, 12 goals, 7, 79. But now in the grand final, I think it will be Brisbane, 12 goals, 9, 81. To Geelong, 10 goals, 12, 72. I think that the Brisbane Lions will win this this year's AFL Premiership. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed and like the video. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!